Hi, my name is Gene Schrader, and this is I2C Theory and Practice on Bare Metal STM32. Um, after this introduction, there are four videos, and the total is about two and a quarter hours in length. The course objectives are to learn about the I2C interface and how it works, learn about designing an I2C driver that works at the register level with interrupts, in this case for an STM32 MCU, although this should be um, applicable to other kinds of MCUs. And finally, an objective is to have production quality designs and code. The course consists of three major parts. The first part is the theory of operation of I2C. The next part is an I2C driver module for bare metal embedded. And as part of that, we'll discuss the requirements for a uh, minimum viable product uh, module. Uh, we'll talk about the driver module design, which is based on a state machine, the module implementation, which is the code, and finally a demo from the console where we'll use a low-cost logic analyzer to look at the signals on the wire. And then the third part is a higher-level module based on the um, SHT31 um, temperature humidity sensor, and I got a module with this from Adafruit. Uh, this, this part is a lot like the second part in that we'll go through requirements, the driver module design, which again is based on a state machine, the module uh, implementation, and then finally a demo from the console. Continuing on, at the end of each video lesson, except for this one, I provide a slide with some prompts or questions to encourage you to do a little thinking about the subject of the video. I then have a follow-up slide for each prompt with my take. Now this course is a continuation of my YouTube course uh, with this long title you can read. That introductory course included the development of a software infrastructure layer based on the superloop and module pattern. There's a link to that course in the notes for this video. So in this course, I use the same module API that was defined in that base course. This made it trivial to integrate the new code from this uh, course. And I also use some of the infrastructure modules that were developed in that base course. And this is just normal layering and reuse of software. So the prerequisites are either that base course or a sim similar level of knowledge of MCUs and embedded programming. Um, the, we do use STM32 cube just a little bit, uh, mainly for pin assignment of the I2C peripheral. So don't worry if you haven't used it. We'll be looking at quite a bit of C code. I would say this code is similar to what you would see in industry. And if you want to improve your knowledge of C, this would be good code to read and understand. Uh, finally, there's not much knowledge of electronics needed. Really, you just need to understand the concept of a high signal, which in this case represents a 1-bit, and a low signal, which represents a 0-bit. Here I'll tell you about the hardware and software I used in developing this course. Now, I have to say, this hardware setup is kind of ugly, not something you would uh, show a customer, but it works. And it isn't common to run I2C over wires like this and, and these, but the wires are reasonably short and we can get away with it. I can say I've worked on projects where uh, in the early days, before we had our, our um, printed circuit boards, we would do things not unlike this uh, so that we could get started on the software. So there is a Nucleo board Nucleo F401RE, and not surprisingly, it uses an STM32 F401RE MCU. There is a temperature sensor, this part right here, and it comes from Adafruit, and it uses a Sincerian SHT31-D uh, sensor chip. Then there is a logic analyzer, and I won't read this name, I think I got this off of Amazon. It's, it's a very low-end uh, analyzer probe, and it allows you to get started with the uh, Celia Logic 2 software. Now, Celia makes um, logic probes that are much nicer than this. They have more channels. They support analog and so forth. But this is a nice way just to uh, get started.
and at work um, I've used the Celia probes. So in terms of software, all the software is free and uh, I'll just let you read through this. I don't think there's anything too surprising here. Now the last bullet here is about infrastructure software that actually runs on the uh, on the MCU board. If you want to exactly duplicate what I did, you would need to include this software. It's in a GitHub repo, which I'll show you in just a bit. In this slide, I just want to make clear the connections between components, as uh, was shown on that last slide in that photo. It's pretty straightforward. The sensor needs uh, power and ground, uh, which I get from the Nucleo board. And then, of course, there are the I2C connections. Now, the MCU supports three I2C interfaces, and I use the third one. As I mentioned before, I chose that I2C bus because the I2C signals um, that I could uh, use with it were each available on two separate connectors on the board. And that was handy for connecting the logic analyzer probe. But then I added the breadboard, and it really wasn't needed after all. But I just uh, kept with using I2C the uh, the third instance. Um, now you can also see that the logic analyzer probe is connected to the uh, two um, I I2C signals as well as ground. And of course both the Nucleo board and the logic analyzer probe connect to my laptop with uh, USB. So that's it. Here are some final notes before getting started with the lessons. One thing I found when creating this course is that the STM32 MCUs have at least two different I2C hardware implementations. So the I2C driver I develop in this course won't work on all STM32 MCUs. Now here are the uh, GitHub repos for this course. The first repo is for the source code, and it's based on the repo I use for the MCU base course. I made quite a few modifications to that base course code in addition to adding the I2C stuff. So I didn't want to touch that repo for the base course, and that is why I just created this new repo. The other repo is for course materials, which for now is just copies of external documents I use in the course. For example, the I2C spec and the temperature uh, sensor data sheet. There is a README that describes the documents and where I got them from. Links to these repos are in the notes for this video. I'll also note that I use uh, Windows 10 as my development machine, but the tools used, like the IDE and Logic 2, uh, should work on other platforms like Linux and Mac OS. So if you try this course, I will be interested in what you think and maybe suggestions for improvements. So please use any of the normal YouTube communication methods. So that's it for the introduction. In the first lesson, we will look at I2C theory of operation. Thanks for watching.